Hello and welcome to this video. Um, in this video, we're going to be looking at um, Azure Active Directory Domain Services. This is a new feature for Azure. It is slim preview today, uh, but will be coming out uh, generally soon. Um, I think it's well worth you having a look at this feature to support some of your uh, on-premise applications that you're thinking about moving to the cloud. Um, think of Azure Active Directory Domain Services. Uh, as like having a platform as a service domain controller. So instead of having a um, infrastructure service virtual machine that you build and you manage and then promote it to be a DC, we enable the domain services on our Active Directory uh, partition. And Microsoft provides with two Active Directory domain controllers, uh, each running DNS, um, to support our um, domains. Now, this is not the same as having Active Directory on-premise. Uh, on-premise, we have a lot more control about uh, over the domain controllers. We have a lot more control with uh, group policies on-premise. Um, in the cloud, the uh, Azure Active Directory Domain Services will support group policies, but has right now very much a flat structure. So the OUs are a flat structure. Um, right now, only one group policy is supported for computers and a second group policy for uh, users, um, but as time goes on, we'll see that Active Directory Domain Services as a platform service will grow closer and closer in feature set to your production uh, domain controllers that you're used to today. So um, let's take a look at this, and then we'll try and discuss uh, a little bit about why you might want to use Active Directory Domain Services um, and, and, and why you might not. So um, as you can see, I'm in the new poll the production portal today, and we're looking at the dashboard. Now, you may not know this, but Active Directory has not been migrated yet to uh, the new portal. So although I've got Active Directory on my list of features, uh, we can see from the, the box with the arrow that actually when I click on this feature, it's going to um, open up the classic portal and bring us to the classic portal and the Active Directory section there. So I've already got the classic portal open. So here we are in the classic portal, and you can see I've got three Active Directory partitions uh, on my subscription. Uh, the default partition, and then two partitions I use for demonstration and testing. Now the feature that we want to turn on is enabled on a partition by partition basis. So if we go to, let's say, the default partition, and we go to uh, configure, And this will just take a second, but if we go to configure and scroll down. Here we have the new um, Azure Active Directory Domain Services feature. This feature is uh, turned off by default. Uh, we can turn it on on a partition by partition basis. And when we do this, we will have a couple of decisions to make. The first decision is which domain name do I want to work with? Now, as part of your or, or subscription already, you might have registered some custom uh, domain names. Uh, those custom domain names will be listed here uh, for you to choose from. Or if you use a backspace, we can type in uh, our own domain names uh, in this box. But in my, my opinion, what you should do is register uh, the DNS domain names first, verify those domain names, and then they'll appear in this drop-down box. Now to register domain names, if we scroll back up, you use the domain section, and through there you can register your domain names and verify ownership. And after a short period of time, just a couple of minutes, they'll appear for selection in the Azure Domain Services section. So what you're doing with this is saying, I want to create Active Directory Domain Services for this particular domain name. Now, as I said, when you do this, uh, Microsoft will create two uh, domain controllers for you, and it will place them on a virtual network. So in the second box, we've got the virtual network box, and we can see a list of virtual networks here. Now, these virtual networks uh, of mine are on two different uh, VNets, and we have uh, two or three different uh, subnets per VNet. So I can choose which one I want to put my new um, Azure Domain Service Domain Controllers on. 
Now, one thing to be aware of here, right now, the only V-nets that I can choose are classic V-nets and not Azure Resource Manager V-nets. Can't do it. Um, that will change, obviously, uh, in, in future versions of the service. Uh, for now, what we would need to do is link this domain services to one of our classic VNets, and then create a VNet to VNet connection to our ARM VNet, um, so I can work with those virtual machines over there. Now, if I select this uh, VNet, then I click on Save, and it will take a little bit of time to configure this feature. So instead of doing that, I've already got this feature configured on one of my other Active Directory partitions. So if I go to one of my other Active Directory partitions, I'll give it a second. Then from configure, we scroll down. And here we've got domain services already enabled for one of my custom domains and one of my submits. Um, and you see, once it's configured, we get given a couple of IP addresses. Now, these are the IP addresses of my uh, new Azure Active Directory domain server domain controllers. Like I said, they're all also running DNS. And we get two of these for redundancy. So if one fails, the one's still there. So once enabled uh, this service, and it will take about, about 15, 20 minutes to, to enable and get your IP addresses, we can perform the rest of the configuration. Now, one of the things uh, you will need to do is you'll need a group. So under groups over here, I've got a group called AA, AADDC Administrators. Now, um, you can create that group yourself, just a standard group, and you add members uh, to it. Now, that this group is going to be given um, admin rights over the machines that you join to this domain. Um, so, um, add users in there that you want to be have essentially domain admin rights um, over the domain. They'll have the right to join computers to the domain as well. Now, this uh, group needs to be created, and then you enable the domain service feature. Um, and then you can add any users to it from your users uh, list. As we can see here. Now, a couple of things here. When um, I um, when this service is enabled, all your users that are part of the domain partition will be added as members of the domain. So when we use tools like Active Directory to Computers, we'll see this list of users um, in our domain. And this list of users are cloud-only accounts, but they're also containing synced accounts as well. So that means if you've got directory synchronization in place from on-premise into the cloud, those users will appear as part of your domain as well. Um, the second thing, though, is that in order to use uh, these user accounts with your new um, Azure domain services, uh, we'll need password synchronization in place. And uh, for cloud-only identities, passwords will need to be reset. So uh, once uh, domain services is in place, um, you would look at, look at, for example, the members of this AAD DC administrators group and we'd make sure each of those users' passwords are reset. Uh, do that through the application panel, um, and this will store the passwords in a way that is supported by Active Directory uh, domain services. Now, uh, the second thing I've done is once I've, once I've, got, so I've got my group there, I've got users that are members of that group, I've enabled the domain services feature. I've also gone to my VNet. So this second virtual network here, MGB Azure Net. This is the VNet that I'm going to deploy machines to. And as part of this configuration, I've added the two IP addresses as DNS servers. Okay, so I've made them DNS servers. So we actually do this uh, if I come back a level on the DNS service section, we add the new DNS servers. And then they're made, they're made available then to the local uh, networks. Sorry, the, uh, the sorry, the, the virtual networks. They're made available to. You can identify each virtual network then the DNS servers that they will use. And this is important so that when virtual machines are started um, on the VNet, when they're started, they will be given these machines the DNS servers and be able to resolve the Active Directory uh, domain names. Excuse me. 
So uh, what we'll do is we will deploy. In fact, sorry, I don't need to. I've already deployed two machines uh, to the VNet. So if I scroll up. I got two VMs, VM one and two, and VM one and two are already deployed to that VNet. Um, we can actually see this if I go down. There, there's the two VMs that are running, and if we go back down to my virtual networks under uh, where is it? Dashboard. Sorry, dashboard. Where it's a bit. So the dashboard. You can see VM1 and VM2 deployed there and their IP addresses. So I've connected to VM1 and VM2. So let's take a look at VM1. Now this is a server manager. So if I've, uh, I logged in initially after I deployed the machine to VNet. I logged in with my uh, local credentials. And then in server manager, if we just go to local server, now, uh, this is running 2012 uh, R2, but it could be 2012, 2008, uh, even client machines. You'll see that I've joined this computer domain. And I did that in the normal way by choosing the domain, saying change, and typing the name of the domain I want to join. So this is the domain name that I've linked um, Azure Domain Services to. Um, provided, then I provided the admin name. And that was uh, one of the names of the users in my um, administration group. Provide the password, jobs are good. Uh, then reboot it in the normal way. Now, this machine uh, now is a domain member, so I logged onto it using one of those domain admin accounts. And I actually installed the remote server admin tools onto this machine. Um, so if I go to Tools, Active Directory Using Computers. We can see inside my uh, domain, we can see a list of users. And this is the same list of users that we see as part of uh, the domain partition um, in Azure. We can see a list of joint computers, computers as well. Now, like I said at the beginning, you can also create great uh, group policies for this uh, domain. You can have uh, one computer, one user based group policy for now. You can create or use uh, this domain. Um, so it's starting to look and feel. Uh, like your um, your domains on premise, uh, it's not quite there yet though. It's not it's not supposed to replace your domains uh, on premise or anything like that. What it is designed to do is be there to support um, old applications. So if you've got applications on premise now that rely on NTLM authentication or Kerberos authentication, and you want to run them in the cloud, up until this point, your only choice was to deploy your own infrastructure as a service, virtual machines, promote them to be domain controllers, and go from there. Well, today, with this new Azure AD domain services, uh, we don't need to do that. We can deploy the domain services feature, get the uh, two um, DCs, and point our client machines uh, running applications at them, or the servers running applications at them. So create a member server, Install the NTLM or Kerberos based application on there and join that computer to the domain without the complexity of having to manage the infrastructure service DCs themselves. Now, I'm sure there's lots more uh, usage you can find uh, for this service. I'm sure lots more features will be um, uh, added to it before it goes to release. Um, what we need to do as well is now look at extending this. So. Uh, in, in our next video, we'll look at creating a, a ARM virtual network, connecting it to the classic virtual networks, and again, deploying machines and joining them to the domain. Uh, we're also going to look in a later video as well at load balancing um, across uh, connections uh, as well, and monitoring of these sort of services. So uh, until those videos, thank you very much for your time, and uh, speak to you soon.